Ladies and gentlemen, our next performer knows no bounds. He's a rapper, he's a poet, he's come all the way from the Far East to be here tonight. All right, Howick. Please go crazy for John Carr, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob Callahan. I've got to perform a few raps tonight and the place feels like a hip-hop audience. Woo! Uh, listen to that. This is fantastic. Because sometimes, like today, you know, I might spend 13, 14 hours down at the Odahu bus station doing a bit of rapping, crumping. And I, I turn up to the Q Theatre and sometimes it can feel a bit palangy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but not tonight. I can sense it. Let's gently get into it. Here's a low energy rap for the old people. He reached for his cell phone, sitting by his bed, and he rang Molly Wilkinson. This is what he said. Good morning, Mrs. Wilkinson. Bert Ross here. We met down the road about May last year. I had the GTs in my friend. Competition strike with a 12 inch carbon fiber ornamental pipe. I was zim, zim, zim and Molly. Zimming down the track. 23 minutes to my letterbox and back. 23 minutes, Molly. Could do more. Because I got the kind of bladder that'll give me 24. 24 minutes, Molly. Not bad, eh? That's the best bloody bladder at the RSA. <laughs> but I don't want to shout about it. Not one to boast, but my zim 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 frame tougher than a post. From the stoppers at the bottom to the handle grips, it's titanium, Molly. Just like my hips. <laughs> I'm a hip hop legend, Molly. I've had three. I got a stool in the shower from the ACC. <laughs> I say stool in the shower, Molly, don't get me wrong. I mean a stool that you sit on when you can't stand long. It's a double seater, Molly. Just in case. On a mat with rubber suckers all over the place. But that's not why I'm calling Molly, not what I'm about. I just need someone who can help me out. I'm not really sick, Molly, not really hurt. I just got a little problem with my medical alerts. I got chains for my asthma and my epilepsy. I got tags for diabetes types one, two, and three. I got bracelets for my migraines and my hypertrophic state. I got one from my ex-wife says, do not resuscitate. <laughs> I got anklets for my allergies. I'm allergic to glue, penicillin, lactose, and Murray Deeker too. <laughs> and he's the bloody reason that I can't get up today, because I'm stuck to my bed, to my magnetic underlay. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll wait for you. After four days, Molly, your spirits start to sag when you're stuck to your bloody Murray Deeker bio mag. <laughs> yes, I did ring the bastard. First time caller too. Told him of my problem and I asked him what to do. He told me what to do, all right. He responded with a scoff and a two word reply of which the second one was off. <laughs> That's why I need you, Molly. I'm at number 24. Just drive your scooter up the ramp and in the front door. Straight past the shower, Molly, to the green room instead. I'm the one in purple jockeys who was stuck to the bed. <laughs> Thanks for that, Molly. Come as quick as you can. I appreciate it, Molly. I'm a very grateful man. Then he switched off his cell phone. Said, well done, Bert. You're a chick magnet, matey. Thanks for medical alert. Thank you. <laughs> You know, when Tammy Ellen asked me whether I wanted to be involved in this show, I thought it was a fundraiser. She said, no, it's an awareness raiser. We're trying to destigmatize mental illness. Have you got any material on that? I said, no, I haven't. She said, well, what about that Bert Ross guy? I said, what do you mean? The guy with the Zimmer frame. 
Now there's a the kind of guy that we're trying to target with this show. Here's a guy who's quite happy to talk about his physical frailties all day long, even use them to try and seduce the old lady down the road. He's not prepared to go anywhere near his mental problems and I know he's got them. If, if they were destigmatized, he'd be able to talk about those as freely as his physical problems. He needs to have a rethink. Send him home and have a rethink. So he did. This is the phone call he made to Mrs. Wilkinson the next day. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Wilkinson, for your assistance yesterday with my trial separation from the magnetic underlay. <laughs> your timely intervention made certain my survival, and I'm sorry about those blue pills I consumed on your arrival. <laughs> Wasn't as it seemed, my dear, of that you can be sure. They were for a health condition I don't have a bracelet for. <laughs> you see, I'm obsessive and compulsive. Yes, the worst you've ever seen. I spend all day doing dishes and I never get them clean. That's why I took those pills, my dear. No, no, the condition hasn't gone. They were just to give me something I could hang my tea towels on. <laughs> And that's not all I got, Molly. I'm bipolar just like Deeks and I suffer post-traumatic stress almost every time he speaks. <laughs> I got schizophrenia, bulimia, ADHD. I got depression and anxiety hanging over me. And the only therapy for that is one that I refuse because I'd rather be depressed than have to coach the Oakland Blues. <laughs> and now I got Alzheimer's which affects my concentration. They say I'm in dementia, like it's a tourist destination. Sometimes my mind descends into a hazy, murky fuzz, but I still have lucid moments more than Jerry Brownlee does. <laughs> and I got the male version, which is really not that bad. I've started having memories of sex I've never had. <laughs> Which brings me to a question that I have from yesterday. Was that you or Oprah Winfrey jumped me on the underlay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Give me a great audience.